So, it is fall, which I know makes you sad because uh, it's cold outside. But remember, when it's fall, it's usually quite windy, so you can fly a kite almost every single day, which I love to do. I used to have a kite named Patricia, and we had so much fun all the time going down to the beach. Um, and then a little child was very jealous of my kite, so I ended up giving it to this kid. I'm very charitable. Um, I went to the store last week to try to buy a new kite, and apparently they don't sell kites when it is uh, not summer. So if you have a kite, hold on to it and make sure to appreciate it every day of your life, because um, you aren't going to get another one until next summer. This poem I'm going to read today, short story poem, it is about another kite that is also missing. Spoiler alert. Uh, it's called, My Grandmother is a Kite, and it goes like this. Most days she sat in the living room and yelled at the television in French. On Sundays she went to church and her friends came over after. She ate pig's ears, which I'm pretty sure are meant for dogs, and sometimes she sang to me in a made-up language when I couldn't get to sleep. In the fall, though, my grandmother got the itch to go flying again. I've got to check on things from a bird's eye view, she said. No way, said my mom. There's too much for you to do here. My grandmother told me there was a red blood stain in the shape of a person on the roof of City Hall. She told me that empty swimming pools look like blind eyes when you see them from above, and that she wanted to spit in every swimming pool in town. How am I supposed to look after things while you're flying around, asked my mother, and so my grandmother waited. I saw her saving bits of string when my mother wasn't looking. The twine from the butcher, the shoelaces from my old runners. She wound it all together on a huge ball she kept under her bed. She watched TV and yelled in French, in French and ate her pig's ears. And she still even sang to me sometimes. And all the while, bits of string kept going missing. Until one night, at the very end of fall, when the wind is the harshest and the air is the coldest, I heard the window open down the hall. I got there just in time to see her jump. She didn't turn around to say goodbye, just left, leapt and was lifted by the wind. When the sun rose, my mother and I went outside. We watched the string attached to my grandmother's bedpost stretched all the way to the sky. I thought my mother would yell or yank the string back down, but instead she sank to the ground. She picked blades of grass, one at a time, real slow, and lined them up on her palm. It wasn't until she saw me looking that she stopped. She brushed the grass away and ran her fingers through her hair and my hair and went into the house. It's been six months now and the string is still stretching. We can't see my grandma up there in all the clouds and the blue of the sky, but somehow I know she's still there, sailing above the neighborhood and checking in on the blood stains and trying to spit into every swimming pool in town. So there you go. Um, that was called My Grandmother's a Kite. Uh, have a lovely time flying your kite as well.